So in this video we're going to look at solving rational equations when we have a rational equation that re winds up reducing to solving a linear equation and we're going to look at the specific case where a solution does exist. We'll do a follow-up video where we look at an example where the solution doesn't exist. So rational equations are just equations that have ratios there's that word ratio that have ratios of polynomials in them. So polynomials over polynomials. And similar to a technique we used with linear equations when we had uh, fractional coefficients or rational coefficients, we solve things that look like this. And the, one of the strategies we used was to look at the denominators, find the best choice of common denominator, and then multiply both sides by that common denominator so that the denominators would actually cancel out. We, so by common denominator, we found the least common multiple of the denominators. So the strategy with rational equations is going to be the same. You're going to look at the denominators. You're going to factor first if you need to. So any denominator that can be factored, you'll factor it. And then you'll say, what's the least common multiple of the factors involved in the denominators? Or in other words, what's the best choice of common denominators? So for example, for this particular rational equation, three times x minus one, the product of the denominators would be the best choice for common denominator. And then you want to also look at the denominators that are involved and see if any value of x would cause a division by zero. So here, what we want to notice is that if we plug in x equal to 1, we would get 1 minus 1 is 0. We would have 0 in the denominator of a fraction, which is undefined, so we're not allowed to use x equal to 1. So I want to note that right at the start. Note that x cannot be 1. And if in the solution process I wind up getting x equal 1 as a solution, then I know it's an extraneous answer that cannot be part of the solution set and I know to throw that answer away. So I'm going to start off by rewriting the problem. 3x minus 1 over 3 and we're going to be multiplying both sides of this rational equation by this best choice of common denominator. So we're going to, I'm going to leave some space to allow for that multiplication. So I'm going to put my minus right here and then it's going to be 2x over x minus 1 and I'm going to leave some space and put my x over here. So step one is just multiply both sides by three times x minus one, the best choice of common denominator. So I'm gonna multiply by three times x minus one. I'm gonna multiply here three times x minus one, and I'm gonna multiply here three times x minus one. So I multiplied every term on the left-hand side by three times x minus one, and I multiplied every term on the right hand side by 3 times x minus 1. So I did the same thing to both sides. And then you simply go through and you simplify. I have 3 times x, which is 3x, times x, which is 3x squared, minus 3x times 1 is 3x. And then over here I want to notice that I get 3 divided by 3 is 1. So this is that first step in getting rid of the denominators. And that's going to leave me with 3x minus 1 times the binomial x minus 1 minus, and then right here, x minus 1 divided by x minus 1 equals 1 as long as x isn't 1. I've already noted that x can't be 1, so it's okay to do this division. So I get 2x times 3 is 6x times 1 is 6x and then we want to multiply out these two binomials and combine like terms. So I'm going to get 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times minus 1 is minus 3x. Minus 1 times x is minus 1x. And minus 1 times minus 1 is plus 1. And I still have the minus 6x right here. Now I'm going to combine like terms as much as possible. 
So I have my 3x squared. There's no other x squared terms on this side. I have minus 3x minus x is minus 4x. Minus 6 more x's is minus 10 x's. And I have a plus 1 as my only constant term on the left. And then what we want to do is uh, usually get get this equal to zero. Uh, if, it, if it's a quadratic, if it's a linear, we need to solve for x. And so what, what we want to notice right here is that the x squared term shows up on both sides. So right away, if I subtract 3x squared from both sides, I will be left with minus 10x plus 1. And I will be left with minus 3x on the right-hand side by subtracting 3x squared from both sides. Um, and what I want to notice is that this has led to a linear equation in a single variable, right? Linear because the exponent's a 1 on the x, single variable because the only variable showing up is an x, and we know what to do with a linear equation in one variable. You get the x by itself, so I'm going to Leave, I'm going to add 10x to both sides, which will leave me a 1 on the left-hand side and a 7x on the right-hand side, and then divide both sides by 7. And then right away you want to check, is this, uh, uh, is this a number that I'm not allowed to use? But the only number I can't use is 1, because 1 causes division by 0. 1 7 isn't 1. So 1 7th is a candidate for a solution, candidate. It's a solution candidate. But I need to check that it actually works in the original equation. And if I don't check, I'm wrong. If, if I don't check, wrong. So on the next slide, I'm going to take that 1 7th that is a candidate for a solution. I'm going to plug it into the original equation everywhere I see an x and see if I get an identity, one number equaling itself. So I'm going to take my 3. We, we found that x equals 1 7th was our candidate. So I'm going to put, uh, put 1 7th in everywhere I see an x. So it's going to be 3 times a 7th minus the 1 all over 3 minus 2 times a 7th. all over 1 7th minus 1. And this needs to equal, this left-hand side needs to turn out to equal a 7th, or I don't have a solution. So it's just a matter now of simplifying. I get 3 7th minus 1. So I need a common denominator here. So 1 is the same as 7 over 7. So 3 7 minus 7 7 is negative 4 sevenths and then what I want to remember with this three is that when I'm working in fraction world so let's say I have two-thirds uh, divided by three-fifths remember that when you're working in fraction world one way to deal with it is to multiply by the reciprocal of the fraction by which you're dividing and three is a fraction a rational number because it can be written as three over one so dividing by three Dividing by 3 is the same as multiplying by a third. So I'm going to make that conversion to make my life easier. Minus, here I have 2 sevenths. And I have 1 seventh minus 1, but 1 is the same as 7 sevenths. So this is 1 seventh minus 7 sevenths is negative 6 sevenths. But dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply by the reciprocal of this denominator. And if 1 7th is a solution, this side needs to work out to be a 7th. So I'm going to just keep, just keep kind of grinding along with this. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4 over 7 times 3 is 21 minus... And here I have 2 goes into itself once, and 2 goes into 6 3 times. And so we have a negative 7 over 7 times 3 is 21. Does that equal a 7th? And I have a double negation here, which is the same as addition. I have a double negation. So I get negative 4 plus 7 is 3 over 21. 
and 3 over 21 reduces to 1 7th. So here I have an identity. I have a number that's equal to itself. This statement is always true no matter what because it is an identity. Identity. So I know that x equal 1 7th is my solution. So my solution set is set, x is an element of the set that contains the number 1 7th or just x equals 1 7th is fine as well.